Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. Welcome to Experience League Live. I'm Sandra Hausmann. I'm a senior technical marketing engineer on the digital experience product enablement team at Adobe, and I will be your host today. As always, you can communicate with us in the chat on the right, ask your questions, and we will try our best to answer them. And of course, feel free to comment. So let's give this a try. Let us know where you're joining from. And um, I'm actually located in San Jose. And while hopefully uh, you will um, be adding some comments in the chat, uh, today's show is about the long awaited new Adobe campaign web user interface. And I have three amazing guests with me today who will show us how to plan, measure cross-channel campaigns in the new user experience. But before I introduce my guests, for those of you unfamiliar with Experience League, it is the one-stop shop for everything self-help. You will find documentation, how-to video tutorials for the new campaign user interface, and of course, the other Experience Cloud products on Experience League. And if you would like to continue the conversation with your peers and experts from Adobe after the show or have questions, visit the community forum. Simply go to experienceleague.adobe.com. And now, without further ado, let me bring in my guests. My first guest today is Gael Moelo, Principal Product Manager. And right behind. Hello. Hi, Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. So, and then we have Eric Perrin, who's Director Engineering for Adobe Camp for Technology. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. And Gael and Eric are both situated in lovely Paris. And last but yeah. not least, my colleague Bruce Swan, Principal of Product Marketing, and is uh, joining us from Montana today. <laughs> Hi, Bruce. Good morning. So let me introduce you guys. And as we're on Experience League Live, um, let's start with Gael and with some fun facts. And um, Gael, you were in your first career a break dancer. Tell us a bit about that. And I mean, that, you did that professionally, right? Yes, that's true. I was a break dancer uh, before leaning into the digital experience uh, world. Uh, it was a different world. I started the break dancing probably around 14 years old, and I did that for 10 years. And after winning different uh, competition, doing some video clips and traveling around the world, I decided to, to do something more conventional. Well, it's, I, I wouldn't say what you're doing right now is very conventional. I mean, <laughs> we'll see the product. I think it's fantastic. But hey, do you still dance? I mean, do you still break yes, dance? Now? Yes, I, yes, I do. But I'm getting older, so <laughs> I can still dance. But I think it, it, does not like, it is not like I did 15 years ago. I mean, I've seen you dance a couple of years ago, and I find it's amazing. So um, yeah, totally Thank at you. all. Um, but now, uh, tell me, since you're not dancing too much in the office, um, what, tell, tell our guests um, what you do at Adobe. I'm the principal product manager uh, for Adobe Campaign, uh, leading this new web UI. So I spent the last two years thinking about the pain point we have, uh, try to improve the overall user experience, making, making it intuitive for all type of users. And of course, making it unified with the ecosystem of the Adobe Experience Cloud. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, we're going to see all about it in a couple of minutes. <laughs> now, your partner in crime is Eric. So, um, Eric, I'm really happy to have you on the show as well. And I know all of us, all three of or four of us, have been working together for years. Um, but um, you told me, and I, that was new to me, that uh, initially you were in sales. And I mean, now you're director <laughs> of engineering. Um, what motivated you to move to tech? I mean, sales, engineering, that's two different worlds, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but I was a salesperson in uh, 2000 years. And uh, I joined the tech industry because I read a book on my way to the office called 
uh, let me remind that exactly, how build a website in HTML. So uh, in 2000, it was not so complex, you know, to, to jump on, on, a such, uh, on a such technology. And uh, after years of effort and different companies, uh, I'm now a director of engineering at Adobe. Uh, I admit I, I joined Adobe with a English nursery school level, but hopefully, you know, uh, after a few, uh, few lessons, uh, I'm with you today uh, and I'm able to talk about campaign and talk about other things in English, hopefully. Awesome. Quick question. So after you read that book, um, did you actually go ahead and start um, building a website? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that. I was in a small company, 50 person, I think, uh, and I uh, created a lot of pop up. You know, the pop up with the bad information you receive when you open a website. Uh, and yeah. uh, it, it was really a nightmare for the for the consumers. But uh, ultimately, it helps me to uh, ramp up. And after that, advanced technology, CQL, uh, .NET, etc., which put me to uh, at that level. But when I joined Adobe, I was not uh, at engineering. I was at product management. So I did multiple, you know, uh, multiple lives in my uh, career. Yep, yep, I remember that. We were actually on a team together. <laughs> That's it. Bruce, I'm so happy to have you back. This is not yeah. your first Experience League live event. It's good to be um, back. Bruce, I mean, uh, Eric, we've we've already talked about what you do at, at Adobe quickly. And um, well, maybe, sorry, before I move to Bruce, Eric, I'm sorry. But right now we talked about what you did in the past. But um, as director of engineering, um, what, what how were you involved with the uh, with the new web UI? Uh, my role for that is as director of engineering, I have a team of 60 people. And uh, when I joined this uh, part of Adobe, uh, it was three years ago, my main mandate was to build that web UI for campaign. So uh, we uh, engage, I mean, maybe 50% of the resources to focus on the web UI, knowing that the other part of the, my team is working on the uh, P2As, which are, you know, how to solve uh, customer issues on a regular basis. And also we have to maintain uh, and to develop new features on top of campaign before the web UI and also for Adobe campaign standard. So uh, my team is focused on campaign today, but not only on Adobe campaign classic, but on other version of Adobe campaign we add. Okay, perfect. <laughs> now, Bruce, I'm so sorry. But, uh, as I said, I'm so happy to have you back, and um, you've you've been very much involved in in this project as well. But first, let's talk a bit about you and your hobbies. So I know you're in Montana. I know you love to go hiking, and you told me you actually like to explore places in general, old school, with map and compass. Tell me about it. Is that mainly when you go hiking, or? Do you also do that when you're, I don't know, urban and city tours and, uh, no, yeah, no you... it's, it's when I go hiking, when I'm out in, in the wilderness, uh, by, by myself, uh, I, I view those opportunities as a chance to disconnect. And I, I just found that going old school and, and bringing a map is just a, a good way to use my brain in a different way. Uh, keep my phone out of my hand and just honestly have my, my head up and be aware of, of my surroundings. Um, and it's just a good way to challenge myself a, a bit differently is it requires a little preparation and then observation in the moment. So just being very present to, of where you are and also uh, maintaining, I think if this is something we all ha have kind of lost, but maintaining a good sense of direction. Um, yeah. But I always have my phone in, in my backpack. So no worries. It's, it's good to, check the, uh, the the maps and the apps that I have on my phone to track progress, see exactly where I am or look at boundaries. So, but I do like going a little old school. It keep, keeps me fresh. It's awesome because I don't think a lot of us can still do it. Um, map and, or could ever do it, map and compass out in the wild, basically. Um, when you're When you're hiking with your kids, do they ever pull out the phones on you? No, I make them put their phones away. Yeah, it's uh, they, they bring it because it's a good device to have if, if you get in trouble or lost or something like that. But we kind of have a rule. Keep it in the backpack. Let's let's chat. Keep our eyes up. Observe. Be present. So, yeah, kind of a fun way to enjoy 
the wilderness. And I see you have some maps in the background there. Are those actual maps that you used for, for hiking? No, they're, they're maps of the area, though. So there's one behind me that's a map of uh, the county where I live, which I'm in a valley and there are mountains around us. So it's a topographical map of that. And then also I'm very close to Yellowstone National Park. So there's a map over my shoulder of Yellowstone. So, yeah, maps are handy in the wilderness, but they look good on the wall, too. So. So, Bruce, um, you were strongly involved with the new web UI from the product marketing side. Um, I mean, tell us a bit about what you do at Adobe, how you were involved in this uh, in this project, basically. Yeah, in, in product marketing, it's working on the, the go to market strategy for this. So it's it's helping ensure our customers understand how to get to this <clears throat> this new UI. But then I think most importantly is working with customers to get their feedback, to help Gail and, and Eric and others understand what's relevant in the market and what, what they need to be able to, to build campaigns. So I've been involved in the beginning, just helping uh, give feedback, but then also involved in the different programs that were launched, like the alpha program over a year ago and the beta program and so on. So it's been a, been a fun, fun journey. I'm super stoked to be where we are. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you're, you're probably the best person to get started. Um, uh, why don't we move into actually the top today's topic? And um, Bruce, tell us a bit about, you know, set the scene for the web UI. Tell us a bit about um, what it does, et cetera. Yeah, well, you, you kind of stole my thunder a little bit earlier in that we've all been waiting. And that's kind of the understatement of the year, whether it's a customer who's been using campaign for you know, a decade or partners that we work with, or just people like us who have been waiting, or in the case of Gail and Eric, who have been working on the development of the new UI. And we're just super excited that it's it's here. And and what I love is that it, it went GA on Valentine's Day. So a day that, that we all love. So it was, there were a couple of reasons to celebrate. My side note, my son had his birthday on that date, but it's also Valentine's Day, but it was a great day to celebrate this this new UI. And and when I think of the new UI, you know, I think of the, the journey that it's taken to get there, but and we'll get into this in the demo, but it's also the the, the, just the way it looks and feels and how it streamlines uh, that that campaign creation process. And then uh, la lastly, I think what I love the, the, the best, and it, it's subtle, uh, but I can now run campaign on my Mac, um, which I know I've been yeah. asking Eric about <laughs> for, for um, years, but I can do so now. And uh, I'm, I'm overjoyed with that. And, you know, we have an extra day today on the calendar um, to, to talk about the web UI. So we had Valentine's Day, the launch, and now we, we got February 29th, the leap day. To, to you know talk about it on Experience League. Bruce, I know you brought us a slide. Um, so do you want to talk us a bit about um, you know the the whole setup of the web UI? Yeah, let me let me do that. Can you see my slide okay? Uh, no, right now we can't. There we go. Okay, perfect. Go. All right. So I just wanted to give everybody an idea of what the user experience is all about. And in the demo here in a little bit, we'll get into this, but first and foremost, that that unified consistent experience uh, that this new user interface brings to, to the table is very powerful for uh, our customers, especially those who also use Journey Optimizer or other experience cloud solutions. It just feels uh, just much more familiar and modern. Uh, it's it's subtle, but one of my favorite features of the new UI is the, is the home page. I I like having uh, everything front and center and at, at my fingertips. And it's it could be reports where I'm analyzing my my campaigns that are in flight, but I also like to be able to quickly and easily get to my work. So if I'm creating a campaign or a delivery, it's nice to be a click away and have that organized nicely on the home page. Um, but then also. The, the content design experience is, is a bit different. Um, now that I think about it, Xander, one of the last Experience League Live events I was involved in, I, I was building content, um, interactive content using uh, Campaign Classic. Uh, but now it's, it's amazing how different that experience is using this new content designer, being able to drag and drop uh, object access fragments, access templates in a centralized library. And then lastly, 
you know, something we, we have heard about from the beginning from our campaign customers is there's this desire for a new user experience, but we don't want to sacrifice a lot of the, the, the power behind campaign and all of the different things we know and love, like the ability to uh, create workflows or design and orchestrate cross-channel experiences. So it's really finding the best of both worlds where we have this modernized UI that I can run on my Mac, but I can also design campaigns and complex cross-channel campaigns uh, similar to what I did before. So it kind of kind of feels feels familiar. Familiar. Yeah, that's. I mean, I'm 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 totally excited about the new UI as well. Uh, let me move over to Eric. Tell us a bit of what it took to actually get the UI developed. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it took a village, to be honest. And uh, the first the first point was to you know convince people we can renew campaign experience with a new interface because at the beginning everyone thought it was impossible because you know we tried multiple times in the past etc cetera, etc cetera. and we didn't have to be honest the the right level of technology for achieving that and as technology evolve and we have what we call now query components it helped us you know to start this project. These components, this is something we uh, we use in other digital uh, experience Adobe product. And so we were able to reuse that technology, to reuse that library, enhance a bit these components and ad adapt them to the campaign. So we wanted also at the maximum to avoid any migration. And so we wanted to keep customer data and also uh, the most important, the compatibility between the new web UI and the campaign console. In a nutshell, when you create something into the console, you can go into the web UI and you have it available. If you create something to the web UI, you go back into the console, you have it available. So with that in mind, uh, the complexity was, you know, to maintain that development and be able to deploy new features step by step without breaking anything. And the result now, after a few months or even uh, several years of development, we have the efficiency of campaign with the new web UI. It means, as you said, Bruce, accessible from your Mac and also a seamless UA experience with other products of digital experience. So um, at the moment, everybody was, I mean, uh, sure we were able to achieve that with that level of certainty, which is the compatibility. I mean, the execution was something uh, classic for uh, such project, but the complexity was really to convince people at the beginning. Yeah, so we're happy that you managed to convince the people. And um, <laughs> yeah. uh, Gail, Bruce, you guys, I would like to ask you, show us. We've been talking about the web UI. Let's dive in. I'll hand over and let you guys tag team on this. Um, yeah, Gail, do you want to drive? Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> one thing I, I would like, Gail, to, to start with is we've already mentioned that consistency with other experience cloud solutions like Journey Optimizer and others, as well as having that home page, ease of navigation. So, Gail, wondering if you could start the demo with just a quick overview of what that UI is all about. Sure, of course. Can you see my screen okay? Yes. Yes. Yes, perfect. So right now I'm in the home page of the Adobe Experience Cloud, so not yet in Adobe Campaign. So we have few elements, but the key elements here is you now have quick access to all the application available in the Experience Cloud. So as you can see, we have Journey Optimizer, Experience Platform, Experience Manager to manage your asset, and now you have Adobe Campaign. So yes, we have Adobe Campaign available across the ecosystem through a web UI. So to access it, very simple, you click it, you launch Adobe Campaign, and here you go. That's the new interface of Adobe Campaign Classic, the web UI. So three things to mention when you land into Adobe Campaign. We have this top bar right here, which is available across all application. And what is great with this top bar is first you can navigate through the different organization or instances that you have. You can switch between the different license, the different application that you have across the Experience Cloud, 
without logging out and logging in again. So we talk about Mac user, about web experience. To be honest, I'm a Mac user, so I don't have to open a virtual machine, log into the client console, and then log out to access another tool from the experience cloud. I can just access to my web UI, and if I want to switch to another application, I just need to use this app switcher. You have access to what we call the help center, where you can find all the learnings, the community, the experience league. You also have direct access to the support, so you can directly create ticket for us, or especially for Eric, to be honest. Um, and I hope you won't create anything. You have Thank access you. to notifications right here. So our notification center will push all the um, key information for you as the users. So it's not only about the notification related to camping. As you can see, I have notification about journey optimizer, about experience manager. So it could be an update. It could be a new release. It could be new features. It could be just information about what you are doing. And the last one, uh, more, more com uh, common one, you have access to your account. But what is great from your account is you can access your preferences. Of course, you can subscribe to a lot of things, a lot of newsletter, but you can also change the language. So it seems to be a very basic feature, but when you change the language, we have a tons of language supported across the globe, it will not impact the other users. So up to you and how you want to work, you can select the language, to be honest, and you're probably hearing that with my accent, I'm um, most of the time using the French uh, language. So I will keep English uh, today. Gael, quick question. Yes. Uh, sure. Akshay is asking, um, will the new UI be available for V7 customers as well? No. <laughs> so the right answer is to be to be able to access the web UI, you need to be on V8. And to be more specific, V8.6 version. But the okay. users who... Uh, the, the the customers who are on v8.6 um, they get it automatically or do they have to do anything to get it no they, they get it automatically as soon as they are really on 8.6 and they have the ims uh, enabled ims is our uh, authentication management system uh, so basically log into the web ui using an adobe id that's it so they should I'm looking know. at Eric because Eric is in the room oh, that, and he's director of engineering. So I I, I count did. on him to keep me honest. Yeah, I, ju I just check what you said and it's the right thing. Uh, at the moment you are in 8.6, you have an IMS, which is, uh, which is by default, and then you can access to the web UI. So we share a URL with you and then you can access to it. Yeah, basically by default at the moment you are in 8.6. And I think one of the key things that we need to mention, um, once you have access to the web UI, you still have access to the client console, the desktop application. So it's not one or the other, it's one on top of the other. Okay. So, so just to say note on that, uh, Gael, it's true, this is what we want to do. Now, the best experience we have provided since the version one is to keep users only in one environment. And we don't force people to do some back and forth between web UI yes. and console. Yes, of course, the, the, the ultimate goal is to have you on the web UI and only on the web UI. I'll be honest, I will be frustrated if you tell me, Oh no, I would prefer to go back to client console and use the client console. I hope you will all use the web UI. I think for the marketer, that's, that's a no brainer. I mean, I love the new web UI. I work with it more than in the client console, honestly. Um, yeah, let's, let's continue. Let's, uh, let's see yeah. what it can do. Yeah. I mean, so I talk about this to bar. Yeah. Go. No, no, go, go, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I just finished that, that part. Um, on the left hand side, you have access to the menu. I would say very basic menu, but we club together all the different capabilities by functional area. So you can see campaign management, content, customers, decisioning, etc. So you have different views based on what you want to do. 
but we also have access to the explorer the explorer if you are familiar with the client console you probably customize the ui and build what we call a navigation tree through different folder a folder hierarchy so through the explorer you have access to all the folders that you created in campaign classic so it's basically a copy paste of all your folders so you don't have to learn how to navigate through these views if you are not comfortable the first step you can start with the explorer and retrieve all your folders and all your object as it is today and maybe in the future when you get familiarized with the ui you can jump to this view it's actually the same view the only difference is when i click deliveries i have access to all the deliveries across all the folders and if needed i can use the different filters here to um to filter my list one last thing the home page you mentioned it bruce you have access to this top banner and every month we're going to have a release on this new web ui and we're going to promote the new features that are available you have some kpis across the different channel where you can select the period the recent activity so all the recent elements that you work on or created and i say access again to the learning and tutorials and okay, bruce yeah. you had a question no yes. no no that's... No, Jonas is actually asking a question in the chat. Um, so uh, is it possible to customize the Explorer, the navigation in the Explorer, or do you have to go um, into the client console to do that? So you can, from here, we have the three dots. You can create new subfolder. You can reorder the folder. You can move folder, delete. You also have access to folder permission right here. <clears throat> so you can create new folder. The only limitation we have today, because as Eric mentioned, we are focusing on the marketer persona first. We're going to address the admin persona. Right now, actually, we are developing the admin persona use cases. You will have access to these uh, rights and permission, but you cannot edit it for now. So you can, if, you, if I create a subfolder, I don't know, let me find, <clears throat> if I create, I have access to that UK folder. If I create a subfolder right here, uh, I will inherit from the rights and permission related to that folder. Okay. Okay, I think that answers Shubham's uh, question as well. Okay, let's continue. Yeah, Gil, great, great overview of the, the homepage and how to navigate and, and configure that user experience for, for for the user, but let's let's roll up our sleeves a little bit. Show us how to how to plan, launch, and, and measure a campaign, which usually starts with defining an, an audience. So, what, what's that experience like in defining a new audience in this new UI? Sure, and it's very simple. Um, I'll be honest, we simplified the UI uh, and the user experience compared to the client console. At the end, you can still create audiences from the client console, but here is the way to create it in the web UI. You click audiences, you land into that inventory list. And please note that you have Adobe campaign audiences, but we also have experience platform audiences. If you are using experience platform, please note that you can share the audience with campaign. So you can create audience. Once you click create audience, you land into our new workflow canvas and by default, you will get a query activity to define the condition and what profile you want to retrieve and the save audience activity. Of course, and if needed, you can add other activities in between or at the beginning, depending of what is the complexity of your use case. If you want to create 10 different audiences, you can, if you want to enrich data and then create and then save your audience you can also do that so let's do a very simple case i will edit my query my targeting dim dimension will be recipient and i click create audience when i click create audience <clears throat> i land into this new rule builder we call it the query modeler so this is where i will define my uh, condition so i click the plus custom condition and I will do a very basic query, which is email attribute with the operator is not empty to make sure I retrieve all the people where I can find an email. You can click calculate at any time to retrieve 
the number of profiles. Now let's do something a bit more advanced. So I will add an end condition and then again, custom, and I will select the age attribute and let's say age greater than, I don't know, 40, for example. Okay, that's my condition. So that's the visual um, query modeler, but if, if you want, and if you want to validate what you are doing, you have the human readable condition right here. Email is not empty and age is greater than 40. And of course you can keep building something more advanced I, I still using custom condition, but you can add audiences, you can select predefined filter, you can do and or accept. So let's say I will add the third one, which is the status of my um, target. So I have this uh, extended uh, attribute, which is the status of my uh, profile. And I have two options, prospect and client. Of course, it depends of how uh, your data model is configured, how you extend the different schemas. In my case, it is prospect and client. In your case, it will be, I don't know, visitor, VIP. So it depends to you. So I will go with prospect. Again, I can click calculate. That's my target. And that's not an estimation. That's really the numbers that is matching this rule. So I will confirm this. Oh, by the way, I forgot to, to show you something. Uh, when you are in the uh, query modeler, you also have access to the result, which is the actual profile that is matching my query. You can customize this table and add any attribute that you need. For example, age, because I want to make sure everyone is greater than 40, which is the case. And you have access to the SQL query, which is more for technical user. If you are a bit more technical, you can still look at this to make sure what you configure is the right um, rule. So I'm good with that. I can still save that filter. <coughs> if I want to reuse it in multiple places in the, in the application, I can save this rule instead of rebuilding again, again, and again. So I will keep that. And now in my save audience activity, uh, I will just add a name. Um, okay, let's find something very original, <laughs> Experience League. Uh, that's the, the name of my audience. So I will replace audience with new data or complete an existing one. You can choose the folder execution. So I will go with that. I will save this and just start the workflow. And as you can see, it did not take 10 minutes to execute this. It took probably one second. Um, I have my target available here. I can preview the result from here. Oh, we have an issue. That's fine. But if I go back here, uh, my audience is created. I can access to my audience. So I retrieve all the properties, the workflow related to it. You can click that calculate button at any time to make sure we have the right number and you have access to the data for this audience. And again, you can customize this table to display all the different attributes that you need. So, uh, Gael, we have we have a couple of questions in the chat. I'll get back to the, the questions. Uh, sure. Chuam and uh, Ngeri Karomera have been asking later. But Akshay uh, is asking, is there a way to filter on query results in the workflow itself? Can, can you re, uh, rephrase this? Can we filter the query result? I'm not sure I get the question. So, if so you're... Maybe I can answer to that. If you yeah. are in the workflow, if you want to add mm -hmm. some different conditions and refine it, you can, for example, add a notion of split, which gives you the yeah. flexibility to add a sub-filter on the result you have in the transition. So yes, yes, sure. you can combine different... Uh, so different for example, uh, just like today with the workflow we have in the client console, if I want, uh, I can add a split activity here. And from the split activity, I can add as many segments that I want, which allow me to create subset if needed. Or, or I can use the split as a filter. So for example, here, 
when I create that first subset, I can create a filter to define that subset and then save the audience. And similarly, you can, if you want to execute multiple queries at the same time, you can add a fork at the beginning and add a new query right here or select an existing audience. So again, it really depends on how you want to execute that workflow. Okay, then let's, um, I'll let you continue, Kaya. There's so much more that we want to see. Yeah, you, know, you uh, want to get into content and it's wonderful how we can create audiences um, seamlessly in, in a familiar way because there's some capabilities that are definitely familiar with the, um, the older UI. But why don't we talk about content, kind of bring together uh, the audience into a content, maybe even a cross-channel campaign. Mm, okay, uh, so you're asking two things, create a cross-channel campaign plus edit the content, right? Correct, yes. Okay, so to create the campaigns, very simple, you go to campaigns, you create campaigns. <laughs> so you click create campaign, you give it a name, again, sorry for that, experience league campaign. Of course, you have some additional option like internal name, folder, where you want to uh, save this. You can assign this campaign to someone, add the description. And if you have um, custom field, which is the case for most of you, I think, all this custom field will be available in this form. If you extend the, the campaign schema and you had 10 custom field, you will be able to see it and edit it in the web UI. So I will go ahead and create. Once you create the campaign, you land into that dashboard where you have two tabs. One is the workflows. The other one is deliveries. So for now, there is no delivery. Workflow, there is one by default, which is empty, but you can create as many workflows as you want. You can add as many deliveries as you want as well. So let's go and click that default workflow. You land into that canvas the same canvas that we just seen for audience, but this one is for uh, campaign. And the main difference is when you go into the audience section, you can do multi-step segmentation, ad hoc segmentation, and save the audience. In campaign, you can do the same, except that you have access to all the channels right here. Uh, so let's do very something very simple. Um, so I will go a bit fast, I will create a work, a multi-step segmentation workflow where I will combine different audiences, enrich the data, and put an email content. Is that okay for you, Bruce? Perfect. Sounds great. Okay. So I start with the fork because I want to execute three different audience or segments at the same time. Um, so let me add the third one. So I will add the different build audience activity right here, and then I will configure it. So first one, I want to, um, let's say, select an existing audience, which is, by the way, the one that we just created, experience league audience, which is this one. Perfect. From this one, I want to create one on the fly. So again, I will do Okay, I don't have so much idea, so I will do again the, the email one, but I think you get the point. You can build any queries from here. Uh, it's not empty to make sure I have some profiles. Okay, and for this one, I will select again another audience. I know I have a VIP to reward audience somewhere. Yes, here you go. So I have three different segments. Okay, so now let's say I want to combine the first two. And I want to do an intersection between this one and this one. So I will click the plus, hit combine. And within the combine activity, you have three options, union, intersection, exclusion. We actually merge these three activities together. So you click intersection, continue. As you can see, I have my query here. So I will select query and boom, it combines the two. And I have the third one here. So let me save this and start the workflow. Here you go. So I have this result right here. And now let's say I want to exclude my VIP to reward 
profile from this list. So I will again click combine, select exclusion, continue, and I want to exclude my VIP. Okay, again, I can save and resume. And I think what is great is you can keep iterate. So when you create your workflow or your multi-step segmentation, you don't have to have everything in mind created and at the end click publish or click start. You can build block, block by block, add one activity by uh, one by one and start, restart, resume again and again until you find the right result. So I have this target. <clears throat> now let's say I want to enrich <clears throat> my population with total amount of purchases, for example. So I will go with enrichment activity, add an enrichment. I know I have a link table called purchases somewhere. So this icon are the link table. So I will go with purchases. And in my purchase table, I have total amount right here. So I confirm and I want an aggregate because the total is an aggregated data. So I will go with aggregate and I do not want the average. I want the total. So it is the sum of it. Here is my enrichment. Of course, you can add as many attributes as you want. So you can have 10, 20, 50 up to you and again, your use case. Again, I will save this and resume. And if I click this and pre pre sorry, preview the result, I have my target here. I have my total amount. So they did not purchase the lot actually, except these two. <laughs> and from here, I can uh, add an email. Interrupt. Sure. Uh, before we move to the email, um, and I know we have a couple of questions that we haven't answered in the chat. We'll get definitely get back to all of them. But um, one question was, can the same action, oh wait, yes, can the same, so this is King Kasana, can this, uh, can same combined action be done on data coming from a different schema? Uh, that's, so it depends. Um... It depends of your query, because when you define your query right here, this is where you define the target dimension. So if you want to uh, to combine different uh, schema in the intersection, you will have to, to define how you want to reconcile uh, the data. You, I did not uh, specify it, but by default it is by keys only, but you can also select a specific column to reconcile the data. And we also have, uh, if needed, a change dimension uh, activity, which allow you to switch from profile to booking or booking to contracts, et cetera. Okay, we also have a question from Awesome38. Um, can we create predefined filters with variable parameters similar to, uh, similar to Adobe Campaign Standard? Yeah. So predefined filters are available there. So let me just open this in a new tab. So you have access to predefined filters. You can create a new one. Again, you have access to the query modeler from here. We can't uh, see it. I think the, the, tab, the other tab isn't being shared. Ah, OK. I need to. Sorry for that. Uh, is that OK now? So I think, yes, that's, that's, yeah, that's let me go back. Sorry, I needed to change the tab. Um, you have access to predefined filters right here. So you have all your predefined filters with the uh, uh, schema uh, related. You can create a new filter, create a rule, uh, a custom condition. I select H, but here, when you click that icon from here, you can go to the expression editor. And from here, you can do exactly as the client console. And if you are familiar with the syntax, you can type and put all your variables. Okay. okay perfect. And you can um, also do it from here. Sorry, one, one last thing. I yes. put the age attribute there, but again, if you are familiar, you have the edit expression there. Again, you can add, so I'm just randomly put something, sorry. 
let's put uh, again age and you can do age plus one etc okay perfect i think that answers the question at least i hope so <laughs> Um, in the interest of time, let's move uh, on yeah. to the email. And we do have a question already in the chat. So I know you will be able to show that. Uh, so there's a question, will there be a seamless way to connect ACCV8 with AEM assets via the web UI? Yes, and I'm going to show you that in a second. In it's the nice yeah. yeah. Thanks for the transition. Yeah. Um, so I dropped this uh, email uh, activity, but again, I can add multiple things if I want to save this audience or export the file or whatsoever. But in this case, Bruce asked me to build the content. So I have that email. It could be a single or recurring. I can click and create the delivery. You land into that form where you will put um, the name of the email. Again, I'm very original. Um, experiently email. The audience is already defined through the workflow. You can add a control group if needed. Um, define the content and the schedule of this email. So I can go ahead and edit the content. So basic details, the from name, from email, reply to address, etc. You can personalize this if you want. The subject line, hello Bruce. Again, you can personalize it. I say hello Bruce, but it will be I think more useful if I do hello first name. And again, if you are familiar, you can directly type uh, the syntax right here. You can attach a file and then you can go and edit the email body. So that's the new email designer. Uh, multiple options to start from scratch. Code the HTML if you are a bit technical, like Eric. Now you know how to do it. You can <laughs> import an HTML. It could be a zip file or an HTML file. You have out-of-the-box templates available, or you can also save your own template, custom HTML template, that you can reuse across different deliveries. So I will go with, I like this one, actually. I will go with this one, use that template. And that's the new email designer. So it's a drag and drop email editor. So you can drop different element here. You have a uh, different uh, component, button, text. Sorry, I'm doing random uh, stuff right here. You have access to what you ask, AEM asset right here. So I have access to my repository right here. I know in this folder, I have access to my uh, content. So I don't think I will send this email for real, but you get the point, right? You have access to AM, and if needed, you have a shortcut directly to uh, AM asset right here to manage all your assets. And as I said, you don't have to log out and log in again. As you can see, I'm within with two clicks. I land into my library, which is the exact same that you have right here in this menu. OK, you have access to the structure of the HTML, all the links available, and you can navigate through it with this uh, left rail. And you can enable dynamic content through that button. You can add as many variant as you want. And I can define a condition for uh, every variation. And the condition will be defined through the query modeler, that the, the exact same one that I just showed you. Again, if you are familiar with the expression editor, you can build your variable, etc. So that's the content. To personalize the content for the first name right here, you can just select this, click that icon. And again, I will remove this and put first name. That's a very bad use case based on the recipient, but you have access to all the data, just like the client console, the delivery logs, the delivery attributes, the additional data. So remember, we put the total amount of purchase. So I have this information available from here because that's the contextual data that has been computed through the workflow. So I can put 
total amount of purchase right here. You have access to all the content blocks, personalization block that has been created from the client console. You can go with the if then else and you can add dates. And I can confirm that. And when I'm good with this, I can save my content. I have my content available there. So un unfortunately, we're running out of time. I know there's so much more you can you can show us. Just as uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat that we still need to answer. Um, we have on Experience League a whole set of video tutorials that in detail explain to you how to uh, use the different features and there are more coming up. And um, there was one question, when is this available? This is actually already available. It's GA for uh, anyone who has campaign uh, version 8.6. Um, we have uh, several uh, questions that we had in the chat. Um, one of them was, um, does V8 uh, use the mid and RT servers? So the answer is yes. Yeah. yeah. We still have the same architecture than the, the one we have with V7. Uh, so we still rely on mid for sending batch messages on RT is real-time servers to send one-on-one -on -one communications. So it's not embedded as we add in ACS. Then um, we have one question from Kamal. Uh, can we integrate the web UI ACC with third-party databases or other apps as comfortably as we used to with the client console? So we call that the federated data access. So yes, we still have that capability. I remember, I mean, remember that the backend is still the same, means all the things you are able to do with the console is available into the web UI. Maybe not reflected, but the fact to consume and to connect with a third party database, with the federated data access methodology is still existing and accessible, obviously. So you cannot do the, the setting itself into the web UI for now. You have to do it into the console, but at the moment you have done that connectivity, you go into the web UI and you have access to the data. Um, Nitin is asking, do we have the JavaScript activity available in the new UI? If you come back in one month, yes, you will have it. So it's in progress. We have a lot of new features who will be available during the next coming months. So by default, you could access to the documentation to figure out what we already have. And uh, then uh, on a monthly basis, we will be able to deliver new features. Now, just keep in mind that even if the JavaScript activity yeah. is not available, it doesn't block you by executing uh, uh, workflows into the web UI. It means you won't be able to edit the JavaScript activity, but you will be able to run the workflow and then the execution as it is in the, at the backend side will remain the same, uh, the same than the one we have into the console. So it's not a blocker for now, but yes, we will give the ability to marketer, to users to manage that JavaScript activity by themselves into the web UI soon. We have one and question. If, if, Go ahead, Gail. There is, yeah, if I may, uh, uh, if you are still seeing my screen, uh, that's the workflow that contain a uh, JavaScript, JavaScript activity. Um, if you try to edit it, you will get this message, activity not ed editable because it is not yet available. And as I said, we are tackling the marketer persona first. And right now we are addressing the admin with these uh, activities. That's why Eric mentioned you can view it you can execute it. You have access to all the logs and everything. So we are not hiding anything, uh, but you won't be able to edit. It's read only for now. Coming soon. Yep. We have we have a question from Akshay. Um, it, he, uh, they ask if uh, we also integrate with other solutions like AP, AJO, AA, CJA. AP, I think Gael, you already mentioned that we can use audiences coming from uh, Adobe Experience Platform. What about hmm. Journey Optimizer Analytics, uh, Customer Journey Analytics? Yeah, so um, we can consume an audience from AP. Um, the delivery data, the sending data and the tracking data, we can send them back to AP. 
So as soon as you are an AP with this data, you can uh, consume them through customer journey analytics to build your report. Regarding journey optimizer, um, if you are familiar with journey optimizer, there is a specific activity uh, for campaign. So you can trigger a message, a transactional message that has been defined in campaign. So that's the integration that you have uh, available uh, today. And I think we have enough time for maybe one or two questions. Um, one is, and this is uh, Bruce, do we have a comprehensive list of the features that are available um, on the web UI today? I was going to answer that. There, there is a page on Experience League, actually, that, that outlines the, um, the capabilities that are in the new UI as compared to the old one. I don't have that link handy, but it's um, on Experience League. Okay, and then we had one more question. Uh, let me see. Oh, this one. Can we migrate? So Kamal just asked, can we migrate our old campaigns from older versions to the new one in package format? Uh, um, I'm not... <laughs> Eric, you want to answer? Yeah, I'm just double check and try to find uh, an appropriate on tour. I mean, the, the question is the, the migration means if you are in V8, you have access to that. Uh, if you want to migrate all campaigns, it means you have another environment where you have right. built something else and you want to copy paste. I mean, in a nutshell, package mechanism is still available on V8. Now, the question is, if you are coming from V7, maybe things have been changed into the, uh, the the way we manage the, the data into the database at the campaign level. So our recommendation is more to move from V7 to V8 through a notion of migration. So yeah. it, it requires to scratch the surface on that question, but uh, mm -hmm. packages are still available in V8 in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, from my point of view, um, if, you, if you're already on V8, you don't have to migrate anything because the backend yeah, is the same. Meaning, if you create a campaign from the web UI, you will see it in the client console. If you create a campaign in the client console, you will see it in the web UI. And there is no, um, there is no migration. There is no data transitioning from one UI to the other because the database and the backend is the exact same. So as soon as you create something, it is automatically available and instantly available in the web UI and vice versa. Okay, Nicholas, um, unfortunately, we cannot put anything in the chat us here in the room, but uh, we'll put a link, uh, the URL uh, for for the feature overview um, onto the Experience League page. You guys will receive an email with a link to the recording of this video and we'll make sure to uh, put the URL to the overview page onto onto that page. Um, we're running out of time. We could go on for at least another hour. Uh, we do have, uh, first of all, thank you all for joining us. Thank you for our, our uh, participants today. We have uh, people joining us from the UK, from India, the US, from Ghana even. Um, very international crowd. I'm. Uh, thank you very much for for listening. And we do have a, a coffee chat coming up uh, next week on March seventh from eight to nine a.m. Pacific time, where you can ask us. We will be there. Um, it's it's a chat. Uh, you can ask us all the questions that uh, we weren't able to answer. So uh, please join us for the coffee chat in the community. Else, um, to my guests, big thank you, Gail, Eric, Bruce. It was such a pleasure to have you. I really enjoyed the show. And uh, also, big thank you to Doug in the background. He's our producer. He's running the show and um, making sure that everything works smoothly. So thank you, Doug. And thank you, everyone. Yep. <laughs> thank you, everyone, again, for joining us. As I said, an email link will be sent out uh, shortly and uh, with a link to the recording and we'll make sure to put in the links uh, to the pages we mentioned 
as well, check out Experience League. We have the product documentation on Experience League for the web, new web UI, including a whole set of uh, tutorial videos and stay tuned, there will be more coming. Okay, so we've hit the top of the hour. Thank you everyone and see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.